uncredited screenwriter, but the story credit uh, still credits Ham. They even had um, they even had Robin in some of the original scripts, which is left over from the original movie. Mm-hmm. Some of those early drafts of the first movie had Robin in them, and I guess I guess they got far enough along with Robin in those scripts that they they cast Marlon Wayans in a role. Really? Yeah, they 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 must have been close enough to filming with the script that still had Robin in it that they they ended up casting him. But wisely, they they dumped all the Robin elements because Robin has always sucked as a character. Even in the even in the the comics, you you don't like Robin. Robin sucks. He's what worthless. About, what about like Nightwing? I don't know too much about Nightwing. Oh. I know that he becomes Nightwing, but oh. Robin sucks. <laughs> that's that's my stance. I'm sticking with that. Not a not a what's his name. Uh, Chris O'Donnell fan? No, he's bad. <laughs> he's really bad now. In, in forever, especially. Batman <laughs> and Robin is just bad on, on a whole different level, but Chris O'Donnell's not good in, uh, in Batman Forever. But if, uh, you know, any angry comic book fans want to come, come at me, then they can, but Robin sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna have to quote you on that. On, on, the, me, on the social media. <laughs> um, I think I think we've established a few times before in the in the the show that I'm not a huge comic book comic book guy or comic book movie guy. Yeah. I'm, um. There's some of them that are great, and then there's you know the majority of them are shitty, and I'm not I'm not gonna waste my time with a lot of them. So anyone can anyone can argue that point with me or yell at me. I don't really care. But that's that's uh, the stance I'm taking today is that Robin sucks, always has. So let's let's move on from that before I get too much shit thrown at me. So they they finalize the script. They get rid of Robin. They. They um, get rid of the Two Face character, and then they, when they have a final script, they they bring on Wesley Strick, who who had written um, Cape Fear, the remake of Cape Fear for Scorsese. Yeah, the year before, they bring him on to kind of do an uncredited rewrite, and his job was to polish up the dialogue. Uh, uh, they tr- they trimmed some of the scenes for budget reasons, and then he he kind of clarified the Penguin's plan. I don't think it was very clear in the uh, the original script or the the script that they were ready to make the movie with. But Wesley Strick um, clarified that. He's on. Uh, I don't know. If, I can't remember if you mentioned this already, but he's uh, Strick is was uncredited with his rewrite, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's not on the. He's not. He's not listed in the credits. And uh, like I said, Waters is the sole credited screenwriter, and the story is credited to Waters and Sam Ham. So they're they're ready to make the movie. Uh, um, Michael. I, I don't know if Michael Keaton was gonna get money. Or if Burton went to bat for him, but Michael Keaton pulls down like an 11 million payday for uh, for Batman Returns, which I know that Warner Brothers kind of didn't want to do, mm-hmm. kind of balked at that. But I think Burton Burton goes to bat for his friend and says, "Hey, this guy deserves it," and rightly so. But he he makes a big payday on on the sequel. So good for him because Michael Keaton is awesome. He's the best Batman slash Bruce Wayne. I'm sure people would come after you about about that, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> and he's the best. He's the best. I, I, you might have an argument that you know the Christopher Nolan movies are probably the better Batman movies, but the better Bruce Wayne, the better Batman, the best Batman suit. It's all Keaton and Burton. 
Yeah, especially with the Nolan thing, I feel like it's an unfair comparison uh, due to, you know, technology wise and, you know, how far uh, film had progressed in between that time. It's, Uh I feel like it's not fair. And uh, Keaton is the OG, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, He's got a great voice. Yeah. And it's, you know, he... He's got a great jawline for the suit. And the the Batman suit in those Burton films is awesome. I like I like the longer ears too. The the, the Nolan movies, the ears are okay. I think I think I saw pictures from the Ben Affleck as Batman and the ears they were they were barely there. But I like I like the traditional uh, original Batman comic book look with the longer ears. Yeah, yeah, I would have to agree. Yeah, the cowl is is awesome. Yeah, yeah, the cowl. There you go. The cowl. It's it's a little bit angular. Like the it, nose is awesome. That's nuts. When in the in returns when he uh, towards the climax of the film, uh, he when he just rips it off. It's pretty shitty, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, why would you? Why would you? Why would you do that? It's like almost cringeworthy watching that. <laughs> it, it's like, oh, you know, this this suit can withstand this and this and this, but he just gets his hand underneath it and just rips it right off. It's that it's that cheap. That's yeah. I was I was thinking that when I, when I was watching it. <laughs> so do you know? Do you know who they wanted for Penguin? Um, no, I think I, I read on who they wanted originally uh, for Catwoman. But no, not- the cat the Catwoman is is a super long list. But uh, for Penguin, no, that escapes me. But uh, they yeah. they had all kinds of names. They had like Dustin Hoffman. They had John Candy. Which seems like a weird choice. If maybe if they were going more like in the campier direction, yeah, the Adam West direction, John Candy might have made it going. They had Bob Hoskins, which which I think would have been a pretty great Penguin. Yeah, Bob Hoskins is uh, another underrated actor. I feel like he had a lot. Well, he's not with us anymore, correct? Yeah, he he passed away. But um, yeah, no, that's a Hoskins. I could totally see him. As Penguin, they had a uh, Marlon Brando, Dean Martin, Dean Martin, which is an odd choice. <laughs> Dean Martin. <laughs> uh, they had a uh, drop the mic podcast favorite Alan Rickman on the list, <laughs> and Ben Kingsley, John Goodman, Joe Pesci. They had all these guys on the list, but uh, I think I think they really wanted Danny DeVito, and he kind of uh, was thinking no not really and I, I believe that it was Jack Nicholson that convinced DeVito to take it because Nicholson had famously made a huge uh, paycheck or not necessarily a paycheck but he had like a, a ridiculous cut of the back end uh, of the original Batman so he made um something like 50 million maybe even more for the original Batman just because he had that deal in place so because it was so lucrative for him I think he's the one that convinced DeVito to take it say hey take the paycheck you know ask for a percentage of the the box office gross so they they go with DeVito um and yeah now now the Catwoman the casting which is is pretty crazy and is pretty famous Hollywood Hollywood lore now is they were looking at all kinds of, of uh, actresses for it they oh man here's the list Susan Sarandon Sigourney Weaver Nicole Kidman who would end up being in um, Batman Forever Demi Moore Brooke Shields Madonna Cher Ellen Barkin Jennifer Beals Bridget Fonda Jennifer Jason Lee, uh, Meryl Streep. Burton thought she was too old, which is weird because she was probably in her early 40s at the time. 
Do you I know? Don't know how, I don't know how old Pfeiffer was, but Pfeiffer was Pfeiffer, pretty young. Pfeiffer's and probably in her early to mid thirties, maybe when she makes when she makes Return Batman Returns. Yeah, because she was super. She was young in, in Scarface, right? That's Pfeiffer. Yeah. And then, uh, and then she does Returns, and she's looking still. I, I she I'd have to look up to see how old she was. But I'm guessing she was probably early to mid thirties uh, in Batman Returns. But it's it's Burton thought that Meryl Streep was too old, but I don't think that there's that much of an age gap between them. I could be wrong. But um, Gina Davis turned it down because she was going to make a league of her, of their own, and even Jodie Foster turned it down because she was working on her directorial debut. I believe at the time. Um, you know Sean Young, right? Mm-hmm. You know that Sean Young was the original Vicky Vale in Batman. For uh, was Vicky Vale was Kim Basinger? Yeah, character? Sean Young was originally cast as Vicky Vale. Was they started shooting with her in the role? Mm-hmm. Uh, she, I guess there was a, a scene where they were on horseback. Bruce Wayne and Vicky Vale were on horseback, and she fell off the horse, broke her collarbone. Uh, that that scene is not in the movie, but um, the the scene eventually got got cut from the shooting script. But they went to shoot that, and when she broke her collarbone, so she was replaced by Kim Basinger for Vicky Vale. Um, and because because of that, she she wanted a shot at Catwoman. So I think I think she was trying to convince. Um, Tim Burton and Warner Brothers that they should cast her and she she didn't get cast they eventually cast Annette Benning in the in the role mm-hmm. but just before they they're ready to shoot um she, she gets pregnant um her and Warren Beatty were gonna were gonna have a child so because she got pregnant just before they were ready to go they uh go with Michelle Pfeiffer who I think was in the running for Vicky Vale as well on the original film, and Michelle Michelle Pfeiffer does it gets a bigger payday, so good for her. And as much as I love Annette Benning, who is great, and she is from San Diego, so she represents. And she's in a movie that I really want to talk about on this podcast. Michelle Pfeiffer is great. Uh, that that kind of worked out for the best. I'm not saying that Benning would have been bad in the role because I don't think that. But I think that Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman role is so iconic that it's really hard to see anyone else in it. Yeah, at this point, I completely agree. She She dominated that role. Literally dominated. <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> with her whips. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a uh, some weird like dom- dominatrix uh, undertones there. <laughs> I wonder if Burton was working any issues out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but they they have they have Michelle Pfeiffer in that role, and I think she's perfect in the movie. I think I think that this. Is one of her best her best roles, and it's it's probably you know when when her time comes and she passes away, it's probably going to be like within the first two movies that they mention in her obituary. I am hard pressed to find or to think of another Michelle Pfeiffer role that's as good or as as iconic as as Catwoman. Dangerous Minds. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, have you seen Married to the Mob? She's great in Married to the Mob. I don't think... Which is, is a comedy that she she made a few years before Batman Returns. And she, I think she follows up Batman Returns with The Age of Innocence, the Scorsese movie. Mm-hmm. I think that's her, her next movie. And she's, she's really good in that. And I'm, I'm a big fan of What Lies Beneath. Yeah. If, uh, if you've ever watched that movie. That's uh, 2000, right? Yeah, that's uh, Robert Zemeckis. It's a pretty good ghost story. Um, 
but I don't, I don't think that any of those roles, I don't think she would be immediately...